We're here at the 2017 NRA Carry Guard Expo here in Milwaukee at the Wisconsin Center. And I am here with Logan Medish. He is the firearms specialist with the NRA National Firearms Museum and the NRA Museums. Logan, welcome back to Curator's Corner. Thank you. Logan, tell everyone, why are we here? Why are we here? We'll answer that question. I found out that you were here, and we were here for NRA TV, and you have a special display that you put together just for the Carry God Expo, which I love. It's, yeah. it's, it's concealed carry through the years, through the ages, and we'll talk about that in a second. So I thought about, what about this, Logan? Let's do concealed carry on Curator's Corner at Carry Guard. Five times fast. Say it for me. No, you go first. <laughs> ah, no. We'll pass. All right. All right. <laughs> Tell us what, you, what you've put together here. Tell us a little about the history of concealed carry. Then we'll talk about this very interesting, this farm that's got a little history of its own. Yeah, yeah. So the display of five museum cases, almost 20 guns, uh, and it spans all of the evolution of firearms and how concealed carry evolved. So we start real early uh, in the 1600s, and then we've also got examples from the 1700s and the 1800s, and then even into the early 20th century in the 1900s, uh, just showing that everything, it's all about progression, and you don't get to where we're at today with our concealed carry technology unless you can look and see what came before it. So everything is standing on the shoulders of the inventors that came before it. Yeah, and it's good to know that, Logan, because as you walk around here, you see all the latest technology and, and really neat stuff, but everyone here has to realize that, uh, like you said, we got here. We didn't start here. You know, right. we started there and we got here because of all this technology and all the things that happened before that. So it's it's important to appreciate that. So thanks for being here with this display. Glad all right, let's talk it. about uh, this farm. What is it? So this is an interesting combination here. What we've got, this the gun itself would be perfect if we were doing the Carry Guard Expo 1870. Oh, nice. Uh, but this is the first one. We couldn't. Yeah, oh, well. Well, we could go back in time. We could. We'll okay. get the time machine. We'll go do it, right? Dude, let's do that. Absolutely. <laughs> so the gun itself is a Remington Double Derringer. Uh, they were made between 1866 and about 1935. It's a 41 caliber rimfire pistol. It's two shots. Uh, the barrels tip up. Uh, it's got a spur trigger on here, single action. And so even though this is a mid to late 19th century design, this particular gun has a really interesting mid 20th century history. Oh, okay. So this piece was donated to us by Air Force General Bryce Poe. He was a four-star Air Force General, and he used this particular gun on this wrist strap during the Korean conflict in the 1950s. This was his wow. concealed carry backup piece, if you will. Wow. You know, his, his last ditch effort, two yeah. shots strapped to his wrist. Uh, he flew, I think it was 90 missions uh, during the Korean conflict, and this this gun was strapped to his wrist during that. That is, you talk about having a backup firearm. That's yeah. the ultimate backup there. It really is. And it's really cool, not only with the firearm, but looking at the wrist strap to see that that has been worn and worn well. And yeah. Just, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you can see on the back what started as brown leather. We've got Jeez. spots where it has turned black from its... Hours and hours <laughs> on General Poe's it. wrist. Wow. Uh, all that sweat. We might be able to pull some DNA, right? Yeah, I'll you bet know? you. If we talk about speaking history there, that speaks volumes. So yeah. tell us about a little bit about how that how that firearm works. So the way this gun works is there's a lever that swings down and the barrels tip up. Right. You load two cartridges in there, swing the barrel back down, lock it in place, single action design, cock the hammer back, pull the spur trigger, and the gun fires. And that's sort of, I'd say... Logan, the, the classic, when you think of Derringer, you think of a, 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 of a little pistol like that. Absolutely. You know, if you're you're dealing with uh, the, the Old West and you've right. got the barmaids and yeah. stuff and they've got one tucked in or strapped <laughs> to their thigh, this this is something that you would picture. This is would be very typical for that time period because they were making them in that time period. It fits right in the 1870s, 1880s time frame. So it's it's the perfect design Beautiful. for that. How do we get more information and see this this Remington Double Derringer and others like it at the NRA Museums? This one is on display at the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia. And then we've also got other guns similar to it on display at the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield, Missouri. Thank you so much for this edition. We've got more to come here at the Carrier Expo on Carrier's Corner. Thanks, Logan. Thank you, John.